Hey there everyone, happy Tuesday. Dr. Brennan Gilgem here. I wanted to do a live video on something that I've been reading a lot about and uh, focusing in on some research, some articles about, and that is about our mitochondrial health. For those of you who have ever taken a biology course, you'll know that your mitochondria are those little oval-like things with squiggles in them that are the powerhouse of your cell. They are where your body gets all of its energy from, from a cellular level. That's where the word ATP, adenosine triphosphate comes in. And um, you've heard all these things before, promise you. It's just been a long, long time. But you might remember the word mitochondria. So recently, biohacking has become a really cool thing and something that I've been interested in as a chiropractor. Um, one way that's an easy thing, first of all, biohacking is a term that's now in Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Biohacking is the way of basically taking control of your biology to get your body to perform or get health results that you want. Um, there's all sorts of people that are doing this in different realms from sleep research to obviously diet and exercise um, to crazy things that we've never thought about such as What's in our water, such as junk light or blue light spectrum, lots of awesome stuff and research that's out there on the horizon. But today, a big focus that I've been reading up on is mitochondrial health. And so when our cells have energy and are active at a cellular level, at a mitoscopic level, at the mitochondria, we're able to see this in our results and our performance day in and day out. And so there are some things that they found almost concretely help your mitochondria to stay healthy and to um, have fluid and activity that they need to be able to perform at a high level. And when your mitochondria, which make your energy for every cell in your body, perform at a high level, well, then naturally you're going to start to perform at a high level and you're going to have more energy throughout your day. That's something that I've been trying to, to strive for throughout the course of a past month or so is just find ways that we can give to our patients to make them have energy naturally and not have to you know worry about being sleepy all day or anything, even when they're getting full hours of sleep. So some of the things that I've read on this mitochondrial health with regards to you know your cell health and everything is the first one is that movement and this is this some of these are self-explanatory. Movement is way better than being sedentary. So if you have the chance at all throughout your day to do any sort of exercise or activity, your mitochondria, much like the joints of your vertebra of your spine, live on movement. When you move, they get more life, they get healthy. This is part of this is because of the 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 cells are able to flush out bad things that are in the mitochondria, things that are hurting them when you move but also um, there's physiological effects with happiness. Um, and that was their second point was that being happy is often way better for your mitochondria at a cellular level. It, it simulates achievement rather than being down and out, you know, feeling bad for yourself. When you can even mock simulations of happiness or act like you're happy, your mitochondria perform better. And so these are other things doing with, um, you know, dopamine or, or, or receptors that cause happiness. Well, mitochondria love happiness. They love achievement. So when you're, when you're goal setting and reaching goals, things like that too, your mitochondria are, are getting happy and performing better. Um, one that I thought was pretty cool was they said that being hungry is better for your mitochondria than overeating or oversaturating them. And the reason because is that when you overeat and your mitochondria are flush with energy sources coming in, they tend to fragment is one thing. And fragment means just breaking up into little smaller mitochondrias or less effective mitochondria, um, as well as these mitochondria saturate themselves. So then, you know, it's like when we eat a bunch of Thanksgiving turkey and then we take a nap right after. It's the same with our mitochondria. When they're saturated, they're less inclined to do more work or put in more you know, effort to, to, for layman's terms, to give you more energy, to put, provide the cells with more energy. Um, also, they, as part of this too, there's less communications between the mitochondria and to the nervous system when they're oversaturated and overeating. So that does not mean that you have to starve yourself. It just means that we in America tend to overeat naturally. And so that maybe there is some benefits, both um, pri you know, from our primary instincts when our people uh, didn't get as much food back in the day when they were hunting for buffalo all the time. Um, there's something to be said about not overeating and leaning on the side of hunger 
more than overeating and oversaturating your mitochondria. Again, I'm not saying you have to starve yourself. Um, high sugar is bad. This is pretty much unanimous across the board now. Uh, high sugar, anything is bad for you. Our bodies were not made to break down sugar all the time. And oftentimes when they, when they don't know how to do with it or you have other things that aren't sugar in your body, sugar is almost always stored as fat. Fat is not bad, but when it's stored in excess, most often coming from the form of sugar, then that's when that is bad, especially when it sits there on your organs viscerally. Um, that is not good for your long-term health. Something, another thing that I thought was pretty unique is that mitochondria burn alcohol preferentially to any sort of other um, you know, nutrition that they're getting in their system. So that means that if you have a long night of drinking and you have lots of alcohol in your system, your mitochondria are going to burn the alcohol preferentially to try to get it out of the system. But just like you don't operate very well on alcohol, your mitochondria do not operate very well on alcohol. So this is another thing where you probably should, you know, maybe have one or two less drinks so that your mitochondria don't work as well. Part of this is the hangover effect the next day too. I think it goes without saying, but from a cellular level, this is what's happening is when you're, you're getting your mitochondria drunk for lack of a better term. So um, it's good that they get it out because it helps that you pass through your system faster, but also, you know, they're not running as effectively. So these are just some simple things that we can pretty much incur in our lives every day to get our mitochondria to work better cellularly, which will, uh, cellularly is a tough word to say, which is uh, going to be better for our overall energy levels throughout the day. So I'm starting to implement some of these in my life. Some of them I've been doing for a long time and am noticing some good results. You know, when it comes to one o'clock, I'm still ready to go and work rather than take that one o'clock nap out in your car during your lunch break. So hope this helps some people. If it did, go ahead and share it. If you want to know anything more about biohacking or about your mitochondria, I'm, I'm doing a lot of research on it right now. So feel free to leave any questions you might have. This really Really interests me and uh, I would love to figure out some stuff for you. So thanks guys. Have a great healthy day.